Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Kent Vita with Paradigm Futures. We're seeing grains mostly higher except for a few of the wheat contracts over in the livestock cattle have seen a little early pressure with hogs, a bump. So Kent, let's talk about corn and soybeans, a big surge, especially in soybeans yesterday. Some of that due to weather. So we're seeing some follow through buying here this morning, but it is, is it all tied to weather? It's not all tied to weather. Um, you know, I think there are three major things that we got to think about. Um, first is the weather and, uh, you know, we're being led by the soybeans because we have forecasts that, uh, for the next two weeks are looking hot. Uh, we had a 30 day outlook from, uh, the national weather service that suggested, uh, above normal temperatures or the likelihood of above normal temperatures for the month of August. Uh, we think that there's probably going to be enough moisture for the Eastern corn belt for sure. Uh, but, um, you know, crop conditions in the Western belt are a lot more mixed and hot and dry, uh, is, uh, definitely going to be a yield reducer out West. If we start to get into a hotter, drier pattern, um, right. you know, keep in mind 52 bushels an acre for beans is a record yield and, uh, that's not to say it can't be achieved or exceeded this year, but, um, you know, we, we may still have a little work to do, uh, to, to get this crop in the bin. Um, you know, secondly, uh, you know, you have to look to the political a little bit. Um, some of the weakness, uh, over the past few weeks since the debate and then, um, you know, with the assassination attempt on uh, former president Trump, uh you know there was a lot of speculation about the inevitability of uh the former president winning uh the election in november and what that might mean for grain uh the reason that that gets brought up is because uh the president's agenda um has been to increase tariffs on china by as much as 60 percent and many folks realize that uh you know the the most likely retaliation would be against U.S. grain. And so, right. um, you know, with uh, President Biden uh, deciding to step aside, um, many folks think there is at least a chance of a competitive election here and, um, and, and a less certainty about the outcome in November and therefore uh, smaller odds than we had previously uh, for those retaliatory tariffs. And that's getting repriced into the grain market. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just jump in here before we get too far away from talking about weather. And we did have crop ratings out yesterday. Western Corn Belt is actually looking like it's behind in terms of development. And so right now it's a battle between whether the East is going to make up for the West in terms of yield, right? Well, certainly in corn. Uh, I don't think we've made bean yields in the East yet but the likelihood of good yields are better and the 30 day outlook um, has better chances of moisture for the Eastern belt than it does for the West. Um, as, as it re relates to corn, um, you know, the, the likelihood of higher yields in the Western corn belt, especially the Northwest part of the corn belt uh, are not particularly high. Uh, we have, uh, a lot of potential PP, uh, plus an awful lot of drowned out and a lot of unevenness in the fields that um, are going to ultimately have some impact on yields in Minnesota, in parts of the Dakotas, uh, in parts of uh, Northwest Iowa and Northeast Nebraska. Um, the rest of the belt, you know, uh, going to be pretty good. And I'm not so sure that the, the even, even the extended forecast is going to change the narrative about corn yields all that much this year. Yeah. Some of this is a function of some short covering as the funds had gotten themselves what record short in soybeans and obviously almost record short in the whole grain complex. But yes. how much of a retracement do you think you can get in corn and soybeans here on a rally? Um, you know, so we're looking at at 38 to 62 percent retracements off of uh, the highs that were made in late April, early May. Um, you know, and so somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, you know, $4 and 60 cents, December corn, uh, possibly four seventy-five out into next summer's July, something along those lines, or, uh, uh maybe even only four fifty in the nearby D's, but we, we should have, uh, 
uh, a reasonable retracement if the short covering uh, is able to maintain itself over uh, the span of you know maybe a week or two, which is uh, at the moment it appears like it it wants to do. Obviously, it would help a lot if the weather forecast continue to have heat in it and at least put uh, uh, some threat to uh, to the yields in in parts of the Corn Belt. Yeah. And wheat, which has come off of its lows, Minneapolis, I think, had about four days up there. Um, not a lot of follow through here this morning. Is that just a function of this higher dollar or what? Um, higher dollar, I think, is uh, it, you know having an impact. Um, certainly crop condition ratings in the spring wheat area remained pretty good. Now, there was some... Um, some interesting things within that uh, spring wheat condition rating. First of all, you you did have uh, the poor to very poor category increase by two percentage points, and while the excellent category also increased by two percentage points. But the good to excellent total remained, um, you know, on, on the higher side of uh, of history. Uh, you know, there are are some concerns about. Uh, parts of Southwest uh, North Dakota and parts of uh, Western South Dakota and and certainly Montana and the PNW uh, relative to spring wheat production. Uh, this hotter, drier forecast that uh, you know is uh, in the uh, in the forecast is kind of has an epicenter of North Dakota and uh, and Northwest Minnesota. And so um, you know we we have some concerns there um, and. Uh, you know, we are seeing wheat, uh, which was lower for a good portion of the morning, start to find some legs and, and crawl a little bit higher here again today. Do you feel like these lower prices and the lower price levels, especially like in corn, we've seen some demand stimulated. And so these are value levels. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, of course, corn demand this year uh, on yesterday's export inspections report was uh, just about 33 percent ahead of a year ago. Um, our current wheat uh, inspections just uh, uh, six or seven weeks into the new marketing year are uh, up about 15% from last year. Um, yesterday's inspections number wasn't great, but uh, our export sales uh, in some uh, year to date are, are still pretty good. Uh, you know, we have to keep in mind, uh, even, if, uh, even if the Russian crop has seen a couple of uh, recent uh, upgrades or, or higher estimates from uh, some members of the uh, of the trade. Um, it's still going to be down from a year ago. Uh, Ukraine production is still down from you know its pre-war uh, uh, production levels, and um, you know we're we're starting to see some uh, increased demand for um, for wheat and and the Canadian prairies too. By the way. Um, there are a lot of concerns about production prospects in the Canadian right. prairies, especially uh, with an epicenter of Alberta being pretty tough right now. Something to keep an eye on for sure. Cattle market had an update yesterday working in the cattle on feed report and the bullish placements number. Is it all priced in? Is that why we're lower this morning or is this a function of the higher corn market? Well, uh, the higher corn market we were, was pressing down on feeders uh, a little bit this morning. Now both uh, the feeders and the live cattle have uh, rebounded into green numbers today, and ultimately, I think that the cattle are going to uh, going to see some fairly good support on breaks, like we had earlier this morning. And the reason being is that these underlying fundamentals and prices relative to the general cash levels that we see in the countryside, uh, these futures are still uh, looking a little bit cheap. No doubt. Big futures discount. Have you ever seen it this big? Live cattle future discount to no. uh, the cash? No, haven't. And of course, there's been a lot of chatter in the trade about um, CME contract specifications and things that they might do yeah. to get a little bit better convergence. And, you know, that's a long discussion for another time. Yeah, it is. And it's fairly controversial, too. So, like you said, Absolutely. that's a discussion for another yeah. time. Uh, the hog market, we're seeing some new life there. We had a higher weekly close last week. Cash and cutouts seemingly improving here. Can we keep going, though, I think is the big question. Well, I think that what what we're going to have is, uh, um, you know, hog producers uh, taking a look around and seeing what can we do to try to reestablish some profitability. Uh, if the market gives them some opportunities um, to limit 
uh, production or limit losses of production here this winter and and achieve some profitability again this summer and kind of stabilize their balance sheets. I think you're going to see some uh, some hedging against some of this strength. Uh, but right now we are seeing a good rebound that I think is driven by uh, the value that pork has to the really expensive beef that we have right now. No doubt. All right. Thanks for joining us, Ken Beadle Paradigm Futures. Remember, futures and options have substantial risk. This is Markets Now.